Welcome to Healthy Aging with Gina, a program for those of us who want to stay younger for longer. And it's been proven that it is movement that is one of the most important things for our bodies and for our well-being. And I'm not asking you to get out and do a 5K, 10K or even a marathon. I'm just asking you to do 10 minutes with me. It's going to be four simple little exercises. And then we're going to go on and talk about the importance of pets. Um, at any stage, but particularly for the older population. I bought my own pet this morning who's running somewhere around this room. So if you see him in the middle of the class, go across like that or go underneath my chair, which he often does. Um, but I want to talk about animals and I just thought the nicest way to do it was with my very, very own. So if you're ready at home, if you've got your nice firm chair, probably with your socks and shoes off, your just feet on the carpet, we're going to be good to go. Our first exercise this morning is going to be all about the head and the neck, just releasing tension. So we're starting with a nice slow head circle. Try and keep the whole body straight, only the head and neck moving. Big circle. Just take it right the way around one way. Last time this direction, you've got to stop at the top. Now you're just going to rotate the head the other way. So think of it just like turning a screw one way, turning it the other. Always just go within your own range of motion. If your neck's anything like mine, it's creaking. I'm hoping the mic's not picking that up. All right, let's do the last circle going this way. Come back to the center. Are we ready? We're just going to drop this chin down to the chest and then look up. So we just drop the chin forward. Drop the head back as if we're looking at the ceiling. Right, going for one more. Lovely. We're now going to bring it back to center. We're going to keep these shoulders down and dropped, but we're just going to keep the chin up and turn it gently to look over your shoulder. So let's have the profile and then gently the other direction. Our head and necks can get very stiff if we're not moving them in every rotation that they can do. So much animation and expression comes from our faces. So we're now just going to stretch out the neck by taking the chin towards the nose and relaxing it. Now what about an exercise for the eye and just to make the eye go in a circle? So you're just going to take one finger out in front of you and the eye is going to just look at the fingertip and you're going to draw a circle. We ran out of music. Well, now we're just going to work on all the joints. We just better get all these fingers going. So it's all the joints of the body. So, and the mirror joints. So it's to think about the hands, fingers, and the feet. Now, the foot can drop down because the ankle's dropping down, the wrist is dropping down. Everything that we do on one side, we should do it on the other. So just foot tapping, hand is tapping. Now we've got two big joints in the hip and in the shoulder. So let's just take the arm up and the leg up, just slightly, and down. This is just about moving all our joints. Good. Last one this side, always balance the body. What we do on one side, we do on the other. Good. Now, what about pushing out the foot and the hand together on one side? I'm trying to keep my foot flat, my palm flat. Bend my wrist, bend my knee, move my shoulder, move my hips. Other side. 
Do the same again. How many joints are we moving? Quite a lot. Things we just take for granted. We just don't do enough of. Okay. Very good. Last one of those. Take both hands to the shoulders, push them both out. Both hands in front. Take the hands to the shoulders now, and we're going to swing them behind us. Touch. Can't do this with a leg. A bit more movements with the legs than the last one. So we're almost coming to the end of our second exercise. Just let them swing. Nice. Roll these shoulders. Mm, feels good. Shrug them forward. Good. So there we are. Just loosen up lots of joints. Now the next one's all about our upper body work. It's going to be our swimming one. So you can open your legs a little bit and we're going to think we're going to do a breaststroke. You don't have to do it as fast as the music is. We can do it half the speed. So chin forward, hands forward, turn that thumb down as if you're pulling the water against you. All right, we're turning it to a crawl so the head and the arms go up and over. Keep that going. Turn the head, turn the hand. Best thing about this is you don't have to get wet. Okay, both arms up and over for some butterfly. Ooh, up and over. Head down towards the knees. You warmed up yet? Last one. All right, now my own speciality, backward butterfly. Oh my gracious me, this is why you're glad you eased up the shoulders before this. Last one. Very good. Now, I want your backs against the back of your chair. So march this bottom back if you haven't done already. Have these legs up. Think of a back stroke. So you're lying on your back. Your arms are up. Going back behind your ears. Nice. Well, I hope it's nice. It's nice for me. I'm enjoying myself. Come on, think doggy paddle. Where's Biggles? You'll meet Biggles in a few minutes. And the hands. Now, think breaststroke, arms and legs as you're seated. Seated. What I know with these exercises, I've got to tell you what to do. I've got to do it. We know what I'm doing next, supposedly. As long as we're having fun, that's all that matters. Shows you 10 minutes of simple movement. So good for us. Change direction. Bring these legs in. Nice. Keep that going. Now, how about a little bit of sideways swimming? So I find it easier to kind of hook the foot onto the side, have the arms go that way. Don't want to fall out. A couple of balance on the other one. You know? That one. So we've had. Three exercises. This is now the fourth. Come back if you need to. If you're like me, you've got very short legs. So this is about our responding and our reactions. So we're just going to tap one heel and we're going to find the beat for one, two, three. We're going to step out on the four. One, two. And the other heel could just keep tapping. Three and then four. One, two, three. I can't count today. One, Three, four and out, and one, two, three. Step out on the four. One, two, three. It's about finding that beat. Good. We're going to go four this time. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Once more. Quicker. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. 
beautiful. Go under the chair. One, two, and under. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. Change sides. One, two, three. Go out four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Going forward. Three and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three. Three under. One, two, three. I promise you, your reactions are going to be so much quicker. If you think you're going to spill something, you're going to grab it. One. Take it forward again. And the other foot. One, two, three, and four. Now, want this hand to touch the knee on the four. So one, two, three, four. And the shoulder. And the other side. One, two, three. On the four. One, two. Always do it on the four. One. Opposite knee. One, two, three. Both hands. One, two. two hands, one knee. One, two, three. Other. Two hands, one shoulder. One, two, three, four. Cross the knees on the four. One, two, three, four. One. And to the shoulders. There. Ran out of music. That's how quick, that's how easy it was. That's 10 minutes. <sighs> Use pretty much every joint. Uh, I hope you used every joint too. And now we're going to have a little opportunity to meet Biggles and to talk about animals and the importance of pets, whatever our age. So this week for Healthy Aging with Gina, I'm going to be talking about the importance of animals and pets in our life. And I thought, what better way of doing it than bringing my own with me? So I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce you to Biggles. Now, Biggles is a rescue peak, and I'm all for rescue animals. Uh, there are so many wonderful organizations that rescue dogs, cats, and other creatures, but those are the two biggest ones that most people tend to use. So I'm just going to talk about dogs and cats today. And Biggles was a rescue from a uh, SPCA up in Johannesburg. And he was rescued by a friend of my daughter's as a puppy, and um, was given to one of her foster children. But they lived on a big farm, and Biggles ran with 10 other dogs. Uh, he lived in a pen, he was not a lap dog, and, but he's the only dog that had to have any kind of grooming and whose hair grew. Uh, all the others were street specials. So that was Biggles' life for the first two years. And anyway, the, the, the daughter got, um, as we do know, sometimes teenagers do, they tire of their responsibilities of taking care of dogs. She was going off to school. And uh, my daughter's friend decided that she was going to reduce the amount of dogs, and she was looking for a home for Biggles. Well, I've had dogs all my life, and my last dog uh, had died 18 months before. I hadn't been ready to replace her, and Lauren sent me a picture of Biggles. Well, I have to say, it was love at first sight. I mean, you know, look at the face. How could you not? So. You think, hmm, there's all those responsibilities of being a dog owner. Luckily, I love to walk. Uh, walking is one of the greatest and easiest exercises to do, just as the Asia's Grace exercises are easy to do. But the biggest thing is the companionship that dogs give, particularly when you live on your own. And for me, I just think they are the greatest therapy in the world. Uh, talking of therapy, Biggles also has a therapy job. He goes to um, a retirement home and visits, visits those who are in the frail care centre, some of them who are bedridden, and Biggles will sit on their bed and just interact, and they can pat and they can talk to him. So, you know, I, I see the importance of what uh, an animal can bring in that environment. Uh, there was another retirement home I went to that they had two cats that just kind of used to wander all around and visit people in rooms and, uh, and just be there with the seniors. And to me, that is just such an important element of having companionship and having something to cuddle and something to love. Uh, you just need to be reassured that I do what I'm sure most people do who live on their own with a dog, is that they talk to the dog the whole time. Now, in my circumstance, this one's deaf. He was tested as being deaf as, as uh, uh, when he was born. So when I got the dog, uh, and they told me, would it be okay if the dog was deaf? Um, I contacted my best friend in the UK, and my friend Camilla has had peaks for over 40 years. So I said, you know, I'm looking at getting a peak, but it's deaf. 
She said, it doesn't make any difference. I said, what do you mean? She said, it's a peak. They don't listen to you anyway. So I feel marginally reassured that that is the case. I feel, and this is my opinion, of course, that more retirement homes should allow where the people are still fit and able to be able to have pets. I know a number of organizations that will allow people to come in with their dog or their cat if it's still living. But the rule is that once the animal has died, they're not allowed to replace it. So it's not that they won't allow pets in there, it's just that they don't want them forever. Or maybe they just don't want everyone to have a pet and they just feel that regulates the numbers. For most people, particularly when the cats are going to live in, if they're in apartment blocks anyway, I just feel it makes such a, such a difference. Uh, and, and the only way to really kind of find that out is to experience it yourself. Because once you've had a dog or you've had a cat, you know what it is to have that companionship and to have the companionship, you know, for, for the length of a life. But I know that the hardest thing, when you do have an animal, is that its life is not going to be as long as a human life, and the, then it dies, and it's a huge heartache. But the reality is, the pleasure and the joy that you will get from having a pet is absolutely colossal. You may well have heard of that wonderful expression, uh, the, the difference between cats and dogs. Dogs treat you like a member of the family. Cats treat you like a member of staff. Uh, I think this is true. My uh, youngest son, who's 26 years old, recently got a rescue um, kitten. And uh, Charlie wakes him up at about five every morning, <laughs> demanding his breakfast. So, you know, literally, David has to get out of bed, give him his breakfast. Luckily, he's able to go back to bed. And most of the time, the cat comes back to bed, snuggles down with him, and everybody goes back to sleep. Cats, what can we say? Uh, also wonderful. You know, I've had cats for a lot of my life, but I've had dogs for longer. And uh, Biggles was very easy to, to settle. Uh, and I wasn't sure, because obviously he was coming into a house, uh, he was used to living in a pen, and he was going to be on his own. But he took to it uh, very easily, and he does interact with other dogs, because there are dogs on, the, um, on my neighbor's property, three of them who roam into mine, and he doesn't seem to want to kind of run with them very much, but uh, they all uh, settle down and accept each other very easily. But when I arrived, I made the decision that, and because I've never slept with a dog uh, on my bed before, and I thought, right, Biggles is not going to do that. He's going to, I'm going to find him a little bed. And I found him a bed, and he doesn't tend to use the bed very often, so I found him a little rug, and the rug goes on the sofa, and he doesn't sit on that very often. But he did used to sleep quite happily in the main kind of living area for the first year, no problems whatsoever. And then suddenly everything changed, and I don't know why. Uh, he just suddenly decided he wanted to c come and sleep on the bed with me. And he'd see me start packing up at night, and he would literally run through my legs, leap into the room, jump on the bed, and just settle himself down. Of course, like most dogs, right in the middle. And um, and if I managed to sneak into the bedroom and close the door and get ready for bed, yep, 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 outside the door until he was let in. I'm sure that there are dog trainers out there who would be telling me I should really be training him better and doing things differently. But heck, I'm living on my own. Winter's coming. Why can't I have the dog lie and keep me company? Uh, I think it benefits both of us. So if you are thinking about getting a, uh, a pet and... I have my sister who's just gone and spent a lot of money on a pedigree, uh, a very unusual type of terrier that I can only uh, say looks like a lamb. Uh, I've never even known what a Bedlington Terrier is. Thank gracious for Google, because you can look all these things up and find out exactly what it is. Uh, so anyway, it looks like a lamb, essentially. But as with most pedigrees, expensive and prone to little issues because they tend not to be as hardy as um, you know, mixed breeds. So I always say to, and I'm glad that my son did go to Animal Rescue, which is where he found his little kitten, uh, there are so many places and so many animals that need care, need a second chance. And I think the thing about getting a dog, particularly uh, from an Animal Rescue, is they are just, don't ask me what it is, but there's something about gratitude that they uh, understand and 
that they have a, a second chance. And so the relationships that you tend to build with rescue dogs is quite extraordinary. And I suppose in many ways, Biggles counts as a, uh, as a rescue dog too. And uh, it's been great to be able to take him to the frail care uh, centers, to be able to meet some of the, the residents. And they absolutely love him. And one of them, he comes with me to, to classes and he's a great hit in the class. And it's a joy. It's a joy, so, and it's a joy to share. So one of the things that I have also done, and you will find on my, uh, on my YouTube channel, is that I've gone and created a playlist that says Walks with Biggles. Because I'm blessed where I live, that it is right out uh, in Nordhook, it's in the country, it's got wonderful nature reserves, fabulous walks. And so we walk and we follow uh, Biggles. So if you're not able, maybe, to have a dog. Maybe you don't have the space. Maybe the place that you live won't allow you to do it. You're very welcome to uh, share the experience of Beagles' walks in the country. Uh, they're, they're short. They're only kind of five minutes, but it's quite fun. You kind of get a sense of being out in the open, enjoying the fresh air. That's one of the great things animals do, uh, particularly with the dogs. I, some people will walk their dogs once a day. I like to do a very brief one in the morning and a longer walk uh, in the evening. I think it was one of my biggest considerations about getting a peak was that I didn't, my experience from my best friend was that they didn't used to walk very far. Well, I think Biggles, because he grew up on a farm, has got unbelievable energy and uh, very good uh, muscle tone and uh, will walk two to three kilometers very happily. So it's good for you and it's good for the animal to get out. And uh, I know this time last year we were all in lockdown and majority of people were not able to get out with their, with their dogs for that five weeks. I know how hard it was, and thanks gracious when we could all go back to, to being able to exercise them. Because they need it, we need it. And uh, the joy and the pleasure you get from having a pet, uh, dog or cat, is really a wonderful, wonderful experience. If it's something that you can't do, as I said, my Gina Clifford Holmes channel has a special playlist, Walks with Biggles. You can come and join the two of us. And it's not always this quiet. I promise you, he does mark, bark and go a bit manic. But I just hope that you have uh, enjoyed meeting him, hearing a little bit about his story. Maybe you're thinking about getting a, a cat or a dog. Um, go to Animal Rescue, go and give somebody a home. Go and enjoy it for yourself and give them a second chance. And uh, I have, as always, loved sharing the time with you. Thank you for being here. Healthy Aging with Gina. And I shall look forward to seeing you back next week.